I absolutely enjoy a uh, Dropbox uh, technology blog. They write about very unique engineering problems that um, we don't run into, uh, you know, in our daily lives. It's a very specific to their environment being uh, a storage company, right? So in th this particular article, they talk about how their magic pocket, which is, I suppose this is their storage engine, uh, had suffered some right throughput latencies that they want to solve. Uh, and they were using an SSD cache disk. So it's interesting using SSD itself as a cache. Well, we know SSD is actually a persistent model, right? It's a persistent storage where you can write and guarantee that the stuff will be there. But they're using it actually just at a temporary cache uh, in order to fully persist it to a back-end larger density storage called a, a hard drive, SMR hard drive. I'm going to talk about all of that. So, so in this particular blog, they, they talk about how they actually removed this SSD disk altogether and they purely switched to hard drives only. You know, because this is really counterintuitive. Like we know hard drives are actually slower than SSD. What are we talking about here? removing SSDs and using hard drives? Isn't that going to be slower? Apparently, it's actually not going to be faster in the long run, right? So how about we actually go there and, and discuss uh, this article? And I'm going to summarize it and uh, give my points as well. Let's get into it. Welcome to the Backend Engineering Show with your host, Hussein Nasser. And I love, absolutely love these things. When I first read this uh, Title: Increasing Magic Pockets Write Throughput by Removing Our SSD Cache. I have no idea why my brain went to the cache in the SSD itself. This article has nothing to do with that. We're, they are talking about a, a logical SSD cache that they built themselves, where they write as, uh, to an SSD drive and use it as a cache. Right. So, as a summary to this article i'm gonna summarize it a little bit and then go through port by port and then uh, port by port part by port and and uh, actually tear it apart right so here's here's the cliff notes of the whole article if you don't want to watch the whole thing or listen to the whole thing uh, there's this technology called smr drives introduced in 2017 it's a hard drive right hard drives how does how do hard drive works so there's a needle, there's a disk, and there is like a little bit slivers of areas where you can write to these, uh, uh, to the to the drive, right? And you can physically put these, uh, I suppose they are called s sectors or tracks next to each other, right? Until there's like no possible way that you can make them so close to each other because they you, they're gonna interfere with, you, with each other so technically speaking if you pushed these tracks together to a small area there's only physically you can only go so small after which you're gonna start losing data yeah? so there is a limit to hard drives so what what people find out is like okay sure we cannot put them as close this is as close as we can get them together you know and of course there's like all those they put them perpendicular these tracks are actually perpendicular to each other so they can even put them closer and closer together but there's always comes to the physical space you don't have space anymore right so what people discovered is this, this technology called shingled mag shingled magnetic recording where you know what let's actually put them on top of each other it's like what is it isn't that actually override data sure but this will allow us to increase the density. So on one condition, if I shingle these things like a house, like almost like a, like a rooftop, right? If I shingle them, there is a rule. If I write to the first uh, track, you're going to override the next one because technically speaking, you're writing on top of each other, right? So here is the condition. You're, ch you're changing the whole game here. They're changing the software. The client side software that writes to the shingle completely changed. Now you have to write in sequence. You have to write in the first one, the second, the third, until you finish it. So if you want to change anything in the middle, sorry, you have to change anything after that. So there is, 
Do you have to read and rewrite? So uh, that's the condition that was introduced. That's, that's Schengen magnetic recording. It's been popular. There is always limitation to it, you know, because you can't just use something and you have to rewrite the software. Yeah? So they started using it because now you, you can get a hard drive up to 20 terabyte, which is wow. So naturally, SMR is the way to go. We have higher capacity. And Dropbox saw that and says, oh, that's actually fantastic. Let's go, let's go ahead and use it because we're gonna, we need more space. Of course, uh, we're a storage company. We're going to need more space, uh, cheaper. The problem with SMR is it's slow to write to. And because it, it depends really on how the client is configured because of this ordered reading. If you have random, forget about using SMR, random workloads. Right? You have to rewrite your whole software stack so it writes sequentially to take full advantage of that. So they said, uh, you know what? SMR is not for us. I mean, yeah, sure, it's a good thing. We're going to keep using it, but we can't directly write to it because the clients will feel it, right? If I'm committing something and I'm uploading a file and I write it to SMR, it's going to take a long time, right? Maybe 100 millisecond, 150 millisecond. I don't know exact numbers, but that's, that's the rough speak, right? Compared to SSD, which is so blazing fast, right? Because it's just flash. There's no moving parts to SSD. So naturally, what they decided to do, and that's 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 a long time ago, right? They decided to long. I say long time. It's 2017. They said, you know what? Let's put an SSD cache layer and write to the SSD. And once we write to the SSD, we consider this a, a commit because we know it's it's persisted. Our SSD is not like it's going to crash. Even if it's crashed, we're going to use multiple hosts, right? We're going to write the same thing twice so that in case of crash, we still have durability, right? So they have like redundancy and stuff like that. Once I write to the SSD, I'm done. Both exit, right? Acknowledge the, to the user, to the client, right? I don't necessarily have, as a user, but whoever the backend application called that. So then in the background, I am going to take the cache from the SSD and write it asynchronously to the ASMR, uh, to ASMR, <laughs> ASMR. Right, today I was gonna write to the ASMR drive. This technology is used as a shingled magnetic recording. Okay, I'm stop. Uh, so we, on the background, we're gonna use asynchronous writing, uh, background writing to, to the SMR drives and life is happy, right? This is called write back technology, a uh, write back cache, I suppose, instead of write through where you write to the cache and then you write to the actual back and store. So this worked for them, except here's the thing. As SMR get cheaper and cheaper to manufacture, they get larger and larger. They said, you know what? We have a hard drive, we have a host with close to two petabyte of data. So what's that's 2000 terabytes, right? But we now they started becoming, the bottleneck became the SSD itself, right? Because now we have this huge host, right? With so much data, right? So we need less servers, but now everything goes to the SSD. The SSD became a bottleneck. So now what they are suggesting is like, you know what, we're going to get rid of the SSD and we're going to write to the, directly to the SMRs, right? And surprisingly, they saw fantastic results because at the end of the day, yeah, SSD is faster, right? But what happened if you saturated? You have, you know, 20 gig per second. That's it. You cannot get more than 20 gig per second from an SSD. But... I have two petabytes per host. <laughs> like 20 gigabyte is nothing. You need the the more data I have, you need the host needs to give me more throughput. So that's the problem, right? That's the problem they save. So they got rid of the SSD, short, long story short, and they uh, change the technology, their storage engine, so that it writes to the SMR. So that's and they they saw what 10%? right throughput at the maximum tail latency right so let's go ahead and get uh, that's the story right <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, read through this and uh, discuss a little bit uh, when magic adopt when magic pocket adopted smr drives in 2017 one of the design decision was to use ssds as a write back cache for live write as i talked about that the main motivation that smr disk have a reputation for being slower for random writes than pmr which is the 
perpendicular magnetic recording, right? I talked about that a little bit in the summary. To compensate, live writes to Magic were committed to SSDs first and acknowledgement were sent upstream services immediately. Just, just acknowledge, done. An asynchronous background process would then flush a set of random writes to SMR as sequential writes. So now in the background, we're gonna be smart. Okay, th these are all random, but I'm gonna collect them such that they are sequential because SMR loves sequencer. Uh, SMR loves sequential. Um, right, Magic Pocket was able to support higher disk densi densities while maintaining our durability and availability guarantee. So this is in 2017, but hey, we want higher density, we got it, right? And this is de-saved us. This design worked well for us over the years. Our new generation storage platform were able to support disk with greater density, 10 to 20 terabyte per disk. And I suppose this, this they mean here the, of course, the shingled, right? I don't think there is an SSD with 20 terabyte. I might be wrong. A single storage host, because think of this, the storage host is actually where the, it's a server that accepts requests to store data. It's a completely custom thing they built. A storage, a single storage host with more than 100 such disks and a single SSD. So they have a single SSD per host one SSD, right, was able to support 1.5 to 2 petabyte of raw data. But as the density increased, we started to hit our maximum write throughput per host. This was primarily because all live writes would pass through a single SSD. And the host is as strong as its SSD, of course, right? You can add all the backend SMR uh, drive as, as you wish, but if your throop is your bottleneck is SSD, you're gonna of course uh, suffer the consequences of that. Of course, they say, "Hey, uh, we tried to optimize that max through, but we only got so far. Even with a typical NVMe SSD, can handle up to 50, 15 to 20 gigabit in write throughput. So that's their maximum. You cannot get more than 20 gigabit in write throughput for a single SSD. That's very low." for a host with two petabyte, right? This was still far lower than the cumulative disk, right? The bottleneck only became more apparent as the density of our storage host increased. All right, so here's a, a graph for those listening. We're looking at a graph where the x-axis is the, num the year, so 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022, and the y-axis actually two. There is the number of servers and the number of IO operation per second per single server. So we're looking at the, the at 20, in 2019, they had around 13,000 servers, right? And, and each server were getting around 20 IO operation per second. That seems very low. I don't know. Tw only 20? All right, maybe there's a something else here, but only 20 per server. And move forward to 2022, of course, they lowered their server by half, so they have around six grand, 6,000 servers, but each server now getting, of course, more I.O., right? Because technically speaking, you lower the number of servers, but now you have more requests coming in per server. So they have around 240 I.O. operation per second, right? That's fantastic. So we have more. But what they are not showing in the graph is the throughput. The throughput remained unchanged, but they didn't show us, right? The throughput didn't change. The throughput is like, how much can I actually execute, right? In 2020, we decided to address this bottleneck by, pa by passing our SSD cache disk for live writes entirely. We reimagined the Magic Pocket storage architecture to write directly to the SMR disk while maintaining the same durability, availability, latency guarantees as a result. We were not only able to increase write throughput by 15 to 20 seconds, you see? 15 to 20%, but also improve the reliability of our storage infrastructure and reduce our storage cost. Why did we did it? So that's the question here. Why did you guys do this, right? Throughput wasn't the only problem we were grappling with. In early 2020, Magic Pocket experienced an incident where a large number of SSD failed. Of course, drives failed, right? But uh, this is uh, this is something we never run. You and I don't run into this. These are like big companies that write fill the SSD maybe in seconds. They fill can they can fill the SSD right uh, within a short period of time. 
These SSDs were added to our fleet roughly around the same time and followed similar write pattern through their life. As a result, many of these SSD reached their maximum write endurance around the same time. Okay? And there's something that they don't mention here, but of course, we have big limitations to like conventional SSDs. And I talked about this in other uh, episodes, right? Where uh, SSDs don't like random write and as you write to these things you have you have to erase and write right to write to a new thing to a new block okay you have to have a clean block and if the as you fill up a block right and if you invalidate something in this block you write pages and some of these pages are now invalid right you have to erase this block in order to write to it so you will find the SSD as the data start as this started to fill up. You you will notice the S, uh, SSD doing something called garbage collection. It says, okay, I want to write to this, but I only have one page. I only have one page free here. I'm gonna move all this valid data to somewhere else. Erase this block and then write your stuff. So this additional I/O is not something you did but it's a side effect of from the garbage collection process and do this a lot <laughs> you you will get a get extreme uh slow performance at the end late latencies of the ssd what also is the another problem is the over provisioning right where in order to for the garbage collection to move stuff around to make space for you right? yeah you have to have a space to move this stuff around. And this is called the over provision. So it's around 10% to 20% of your SSD that you cannot use, not your data, it's the system data that moves stuff around up and down to keep this run. So that's one problem. Another problem is of course the flash translation layer where you mapping a block, I think it's a block page translation to the LBA is mapped to a physical LBA. So what you what you write to is very similar to vir how virtual memory work in the operating system. You write to a logical LBA, right? This logical LBA is not like logical LBA number seven doesn't mean physical LBA number seven and disk. They could be anywhere in disk. And they do it this way for the garbage collection to work, right? So if you write it somewhere, they can move your data around and they can just change that mapping layer if you will this mapping is costly because you have to map a block to a block a block to a block so you need to store it somewhere where do you store it you need a ram you need a memory you need a dram so there is a space in the ssd allocated just for this ftl the flash translation layer so there is a lot of cost a lot of technology has been uh improving the ssd and i'm still reading about this still i'm not very educated in that but there's something called the zone there's something called the zone uh, namespaces where uh, they function very similarly to smr where you have like a big zone and you only map zones so you have fewer zones than blocks of course so you need a little bit less dram you don't no longer need over provisioning because everything is now host managed you basically take care of the eraser and the writing and you have to write in sequence similar very similar to shingle uh, magnetic recording they don't mention any of this here so i don't know if they tried zoned uh, uh so zone storage in there before they moved there i would be surprised after maybe three years they say you know what we were wrong we're gonna move back to ssd but we're gonna use this zoned uh, namespaces uh because it's very similar to shingle right um uh, maybe i don't know this can change and and i think their architecture allows easily to switch things backward and forward right so it's going to be interesting to see where they go with that so this is they talk about this here uh, we tried a lot of things uh, we removed ssd and then we're now happier we got we got a better results updating our storage engine this is, uh, they show you how to up they updated their storage engine uh what this is another thing that is interesting so all these files that you upload they arrange it into logical blocks the word block is the most overloaded word in software engineering right if i say block like to a to a software engineer this means something to a programming this means another thing to a to an ssd 
driver author this means a completely different thing right to have operating system uh kernel developer this means a completely different thing <laughs> so i really need to talk about like what does it mean to a block here a block is a user thing for this magic pocket right and they arrange these blocks which is like a fixed size of some sort into extents right and the, an extent is, is a, basically a collection of these blocks so they have a around two gigs of these extents each size right and you have an extent open and you have to write sequentially again and this the beauty of sequential writes is the goal so that they can write to the smrs in sequence again everything has to be in sequence that's that's the condition here you have to write in sequence to take full advantage of these things so they they open very similar to terminology to the zone namespaces where you open a zone and you write to the zone and you close a zone so you open an extent and you write to an extent and then the extent is full and then you close the extent and then here's another thing they make the extent uh immutable so you can't change it and they this is how we show this is the old storage host uh, for those listening we're looking at the shared ssd which is that he, uh, that ssd that is used for caching and then you you write to the ssd and you get an acknowledgement immediately and then on the background they flush things to the smrs yeah. in the new storage host what they do is there is nothing you just immediately write to the uh, storage uh, smr immediately yeah. so that's the hundreds of disk here that's the architecture here they talk about like how they change the extent i think i i suppose not the extent the block metadata so they can add the metadata itself of the block inside the block right whereas in the original st uh, storage design they kind of they had the metadata in the cache but the raw data and the smr and there's no point of doing that why don't just put everything in one place and sounds like an a better design right have everything in line so that when you read something, you have everything. Eh? It's always a good idea to have things in line for performance, but of course you increase the size with that. It's fantastic. I think you hear something in the background as my kid. <laughs> All right. So now the more I think about it, it's like, really, if you really, really think about it, how does writing to a hard drive is fa faster than writing to an SSD? Here's where I was really fascinated. While true, a write to an SSD, a single write is faster, right, than writing to a to a disk to a hard disk. But we're talking about like hundred milliseconds versus making microseconds, right? Like in milliseconds versus in microseconds uh, to SSD. But once you fill it up, right, and you hit these ceiling of the where the garbage collection in the ssd start rearing its head and start uh, moving thing around and and these algorithm of even where leveling if there's where leveling algorithms implemented in the ssd start moving things around you will get slower and slower writes in the ssd so the old architecture they were getting the latency was around what i'm reading 750 millisecond with the ssd which is wow that's that's really slow right 750 milliseconds but we're talking on p99 here's like that means if you translate this that means 99 percent of their requests are sl are are lower than 7 750 millisecond so that means the highest were 750 millisecond that's what how this is how you translate it basically right with their with their new architecture they went down to i can't read this man it's like a, what 250 millisecond i think i think that's like half of that yeah 250 millisecond they're p99 so they, that's a way lower latency although a single operation is faster than ssd than hard drive which is we're talking micro and milli accumulatively they they were better in the long run right and the throughputs whoa we're talking 1.5 uh one 1500 uh throughput which is like writes per second versus only 500 that's like what 3x so writing with other ssd is actually faster why because the, the ssd were the bottom now we don't have that we just write parallel to all these beautiful disks right 
we we almost like fanned out in this case. It's fascinating to read about all this stuff. But again, I don't know what would happen if they experimented with like the same caching layer, but multiple SSDs with zoned namespaces. They would definitely get more disk space, more density with zoned namespace base SSD. But I wouldn't know. I don't know. They would get definitely they get better. And I think their latency was going to be better while well, they would not do any well they will not need to do any of these changes right add a couple of instead of a single ssd add a couple of them right uh yeah that will be interesting to see what would happen in that case i wish i wish they actually had a section where they say hey by the way we explored with these technologies and it didn't work for us but again uh everything is new we're talking the zone namespaces where it came in what 2020 maybe like that's when I started re learning about it and reading about it. So it's actually interesting. So let's, the rollout. What did they do to roll this out? With the success of our Hack Week project, we decided to prepare the future for production. The feature, sorry. We started with a subset magic po pocket host. The more confidence we gain, the more host we include. This is a standard rollout uh, process where, he, of course, the API should never change here. The API should be identical, right? Only the backend change. That's standard, you know, whatever you call it, blue, green uh, deployment and or A-B testing. Or, every, every day they change the name. So it's like you, you introduce a new version and then, uh, the API doesn't really change, so your clients doesn't really change. So, your your end client, right? That the the how the function is executed change. So the new host will take this, and at the end of the day, if the read function and the write function is the same, uh, nothing changes, right? So as long as the return format is the same, nothing will break, right? So that's how they. By the end of Q1 2020, all SSDs have been successfully removed. So by the end of Q1, so that's early 2022, huh? Magic Pocket and our storage costs were writing directly to SMR drives. Now that we are no longer limited by the throughput of our SSD, our write throughput access storage fleet has increased by 20%. This has helped us meet the overall increasing throughput, new Magic workload, while keeping our storage fleet the same size. There have been other benefits too. On average, eight to SSD, eight to ten SSD disk would fail each month. Wow, really? So, really, SSD fail more frequent than disk, huh? Than hard drive. Requiring the data center operation to manually inspect, repair, and replace each drive. Removing our SSD cache disk eliminates the single point of failure and has also reduced our repair rate. And the one less component to design, removing SSD has also reduced the complexity of our hardware platform. Uh, design so this tells me that they are not going to introduce SSDs back <laughs> I don't think so because now their hardware team is now more specialized everyone in the hardware team has nothing to do with SSDs yeah here and there but primarily now everything is SMR so they need to learn everything about SMR they invested a lot about this technology but uh, uh, yeah I don't know how SMR drives last like fantastic 8 to 10 SSD failed. That's a, I never heard about this. That's actually interesting. The project has been a big win for reality. Again, this is a fantastic article and all. I, I, I'm going to link it below for you to, to read through. But, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting reading through these, you know, special cases, you know. Like, again, this is a huge project and even writing this article. So let's shout out the authors here. Uh, Anchor Kol Sher Sta. Rajat Ghul and Sandeep Umadi, right? Uh, fantastic work writing on this article. But uh, yeah, it's just like fascinating. There's all those things you can improve. There's all those things you can nitpick, right? I'm, I'm, I didn't make this video to nitpick. I'm just really admiring uh, first uh, transparently writing about your technology. Like Not a lot of people do that, you know? Because you say, hey, this is what you did. This is what we learned. This is what you, we're doing. Maybe we're going to do better, right, in the future. So it's just this 20-15%. Like, is it too much? Maybe it's not, right? Like, uh, on the grand scheme of things. But it is 
fascinating to see this change and i'm pretty sure they're going to continue improving this architecture i found it very interesting i thought i'd share my uh, my two cents on this uh yeah again it would be nice to see how zoned namespaces for example uh performed right as a cache layer that would be interesting to see but it seems like their pr main problem was the ssds were failing a lot so introducing zoned i don't think zoned namespaces are any better compared to the regular ssds right again there's so much unknown and i'm not really a, a storage engineer i right know a hardware engineer but uh, i love reading from uh, you know the experts and just learning about these new things right and uh yeah hope you enjoyed this episode guys see you in the next one goodbye